In this video tutorial, I want to show you how to use the quizzes feature in Canvas. And if you haven't already watched my other Canvas videos, you really should go back and watch those. They cover all the basics of getting started using Canvas, plus much more. But in this tutorial, let's focus in just on quizzes. If you look over here on the right side of this Unit 1 module, you can see that there's a plus sign. If I click that plus sign, it enables me to create a quiz, a new quiz. But rather than jump to that point, I think I would rather start somewhere else. I'm going to cancel that for now. I'll come back to that later. But for now, I'm just going to go here to the left and click on quizzes. And it pulls up a screen here with a list of some quizzes that I've used in this course or that I've started using. I also get a panel here with a tutorial, but I'm going to close that. And I want to get ready to build a nice quiz for my Spanish students. And I'm really tempted to click here on Add Quiz. And that is a good thing to click on. However, before I do, I'm going to click here on this gear symbol. And notice what pops up. There's a button that says Manage Quiz Banks. This is a great feature in Canvas. And so I clicked on that. And it takes me to a page where my quiz banks appear. And you can see I don't have any question banks. So let's add a question bank. I'm going to go here to the upper right corner and click on Add Question Bank. It wants me to name the question bank. I'll call this Los Colores, the colors. And then I'll hit enter or return on the keyboard. So now I have a question bank, but it's blank, it's empty. So I'll click on Los Colores, it opens up the question bank, and there are no questions listed here. Let's add a question to the question bank. Now, before I do that, some of you may be wondering, why am I even working with question banks? Why not just build your quiz? Let's talk about that for a minute. What is a question bank? It's a series of questions. It's a bank full of questions that you can pull questions from randomly. So let's say I'm doing a mid-year exam for my students and I want to test them on everything that we've covered from chapter one through chapter eight but I don't want every student to get the exact same questions. Maybe I want each student to have to answer five color questions and five adjective questions and five animal questions, etc. So I can build a bank of, let's say, 20 different color questions in here, and then each student will be presented with a different five questions from that bank of 20 different color questions. So let's look at how this is done. I'm going to click here where it says add a question and I simply fill in the boxes. So I've typed in the question, how do you say yellow in Spanish? This can be multiple choice, true, false, it can be fill in the blank, numerical answer, it can be an essay question, all sorts of different things. And here you could type in something specific to your question, but I'm just going to call this color question one. Down here I put in the question itself. So how do you say yellow in Spanish? That's going to be my question. Down here, I need to put the correct answer, amarillo, and then some distractor answers. Okay, so I've got four answers, and you don't have to have four. I could have deleted some of these. I want you to notice this little box here. For each of the possible answers, there's a little box. Some of them are green, some of them are pink or red. What this is, is it's feedback that I could give back to the student. So if the student answers amarillo, what feedback could I give them? I could click here and I could say something like, excelente, click done. What if they give the answer blanco, which is not correct? I could go here and put in some feedback and say, no, sorry, lo siento. No, I'm sorry. Blanco means white. So basically you can use this as another opportunity to teach your students. It's a wonderful kind of last minute lesson that you can give the students. Even as they're getting the question wrong, you're teaching them. So it can be really effective. When you're done building the question, just click update question and question one is done. Now I would just continue to add questions. I could put dozens of questions in here, hundreds of questions in here. It's just a bank full of questions. Give me a minute to add a few more questions and then I'll resume the video. Okay, great. Now I have five questions, but imagine instead of five, imagine 20 or 30 or 100 questions in this question bank. Now that that's done, I could go back to question banks if I wanted to and I could create another question bank. Maybe it's Spanish adjectives or maybe it's the Spanish animals. Or think about this, what about having Los colores easy, so the easier color questions. And then another question bank for harder color questions in Spanish. And so that way you could say, I'll pull three easier questions and then maybe three harder questions from the two different banks. 
So there's some really exciting things you can do with this if you start building some good question banks. All right, so now that I have a question bank, I can go back into my module here, module one, unit one. I'm gonna click the add button. This time I'll add a quiz, new quiz, and I'll call this mid-year review. Right now I only have one group, an assignments group, but if I had established a quizzes group, I would have put it there. So I'll just click add item. There's my quiz, I should publish it. And then if I click on the quiz, I can see that it's actually completely blank. So I need to go in and edit it. There's the title of the quiz. I could put in some instructions here so that the students know what to expect with a quiz. Notice that you can mark it as a graded quiz or a practice quiz or other things like surveys. There are some great options here. I could shuffle the answers. I could have a time limit for the students to take the quiz. I could allow multiple attempts. And if you do, notice that you can set it to keep only their highest score or the average of their scores or the latest score. How many attempts are they allowed? You can limit it to two, you can limit it to five, whatever you wanna do. Next, you can let the students see their quiz responses. Incorrect questions will be marked in student feedback. So there's some options there that you should look at as well if you're interested. And then if you want, you can require an access code for your quiz. Next, you can assign it to certain students or to all students, and then you save. Now, when I save, it's gonna save those options, but really, I still don't actually have a quiz, do I? So I clicked edit. Yes, I've got a title, yes, I've got a description, and I've got options, but Questions, where are my questions? If I click here, it lists my questions and I don't have any. So I could build my quiz question by question. I could click here where it says add new question and I could make a question and save it. But I love the idea of instead of that, why not use the question banks that I've developed or that I'm in the process of developing. So if I click here on questions, I can go here where it says new question group. And this group, I'm gonna call it Easy Colors Questions. And I want to pick three questions out of the five that I've created. Each question is worth one point, but I could change that if I want to. And I'm gonna to link to a question bank. When I click on that, it lists my question banks and I only have the one, so I'm gonna click on it, select bank. Questions will be pulled from the bank Los Colores. All right, now that I've done that, I could add another question group and imagine I have another question bank to pull from. I could pull from that other question bank, maybe two questions or three or five or whatever. Now I can mix up these question groups with just regular straight questions that are not pulled from a group. So I can still build questions from scratch and save them and then kind of lose that work. I mean, it's not really lost, but uh, it's not part of a bank. So feel free to mix and match question groups from question banks and custom made questions that you build just for this particular quiz. When you're done, click save and this quiz is ready to be taken. If I go into settings now and switch to student view, this is what the quiz looks like. I can click on the quiz, click take the quiz, and I'm getting a random color question from the easy colors question group. There's another question, got that wrong, and another. And then I can click submit quiz. Now the person sitting next to me takes the same quiz, gets different questions, okay? Or if I click take the quiz again, I get slightly different questions. So in a nutshell, that is the quiz features in Canvas and how to use quiz banks to randomize the questions that your students see and really to save you work over time. I could very easily add five questions a month to my question banks or maybe 50 questions a year, etc. And pretty quickly, these question banks would really become robust and really useful for me and helpful to my students. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Twitter, Pinterest, and Facebook. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for another video from me at least every Monday.